Earlier this week, California put to law, this was a kind of an interesting thing, um, from a, just a general, not just gaming perspective, but of course it pertains a bit to gaming, uh, given where it's located. Earlier this week, California put to law that companies must post salaries in their job listings. So previous to this, and this is pretty much, I mean, e here, if you were to go look for jobs, you'll find, you can find sometimes the listing will include a salary. Sometimes it will be a salary band. Sometimes that's from the company itself. Sometimes it's actually just from like, if you're using a, um, like a job finding website, it's the, it's the website that is combing the industry for the average and putting an average in. Uh, sometimes it's hard to tell which of those you're getting when you see it on the site. Sometimes you have to go digging to find out, is the, is this the actual salary or is this like something that is just an average based on, on whatever, you know, uh, this website is showing me. So they put the law that companies have to post their salaries in their job listings. Now in the video game industry specifically to bring this back to what we would talk about here on tech alpha, this has led to some developers like blizzard trying to work around this requirement by posting enormous ranges. Uh, in their job listings. So for example, one role is listed uh, recently after this change uh, to range from 134000 to $247,000, which is a slight range. There's several dollars between those two figures. Uh, and it's not the only one. There was another one that ranged from 80 K to 150 K. Uh, so basically they're saying, Hey, shit, you could be either doing, Oh, you know, okay for yourself, or you could be fucking bringing in a cool quarter of a million dollars a year. Who knows until you get here, but that's what we're going to be able to post. So, uh, and there's a very good reason for why they're doing this. It's, it's why that most companies do this in general is, is there is an agency problem there where the company has all the information. You have none. Uh, it is taboo still to talk about salaries in any industry in general. People still don't, you know, the whole idea is don't ask, you know, don't ask a woman or age, don't ask a man a salary. Uh, and so there's a lot of like fog of war as to what everyone is actually making and what any given role in any given industry, what is it actually worth? What are companies, especially on the higher end, actually paying these people for these roles? And what it allows them to do is when they hire somebody, they, well, anyone that's gone through a process, especially with a tech company, is they're going to ask you, so what do you think? What do you, th what do you think? It's like doing, it's like Jeff going to a, a garage sale. So what do you think, you know, what do you think this is, uh, what do you think this is worth? And then there's a dickering back and forth from between the entities until you come to a, and do you come to a thing where you're like, oh, okay, so this, th we are comfortable in providing you with this compensation, you know, whether it's the salary alone or the salary plus, ben plus benefits or the salary plus benefits and stock options or whatever else comes to this, you know, that you come to this number, but that number's not public and nobody really knows what everyone's getting. So now that they're doing this, this is how Blizzard and other, it's not that Blizzard's the only one fucking doing this, but that's just for the sake of the video game connection where people are now finding out in the games industry in general, some of them are finding out that they're getting fucking fleeced. <laughs> so there's some people who have been doing high end QA for uh, some of the most prominent companies in the industry for bordering on a decade plus who have enormous amounts of responsibility within, within that role uh, that are getting paid in some instances, one half to one third, what other people in comparative company sizes are making at that role. And they, but in the past, nobody had a fucking clue. Like nobody, like, unless the only way for you to really know this would be if you had a friend, like, let's say you worked at Blizzard and you had a friend that was also doing QA, but they were doing QA at like, let's say Riot. And you were like, Hey friendo at Riot, how are you doing? And your friend at Riot says, I just bought my third car. And you said, excuse me. And then you might know that you're getting paid one third as much as your friend that's working at Riot for doing the same job. And, uh, and so, and this isn't just like a gender or like a sex difference between men, women, this is everyone getting fucked hard. And that's, and that's for the reason I just explained, of course, it's not, it's not exactly secrets. The companies get all the power by doing that. It allows them to spend less money on employees as they don't know what they're worth and they can get away with that. And some people even know what they're worth, but they can really play hardball in the interview and people are just looking for a job. They're eventually going to likely cave. They might think, oh, I'm worth 150K, but the company offers them 125. And they're like, am I really going to argue 
so yeah. fucking hard for twenty five thousand extra dollars, and they just take it. So, so there you go. And this this uh, it's California. If it gets any further than that, I have no idea. But uh, what do you think of this of, of that change? I personally am in favor of it because I think it levels the playing field for people entering the market, so you don't end up in crazy situations where one guy is getting paid or girls getting paid fifty k, and literally across the street, same role, same responsibilities, hundred and fifty k. And it's not just because they can't pay it, it's because they haven't had to post anything, so there's been no pushback from people who are, who are taking these positions. Because it's hard, it's like, I know it's like about knowing your worth, but there is a line to how much you can go in, and they come in, the company says, we're going to give you this, and, and, and you think you're worth uh, like $80,000 more than that. In the back of your mind, you're thinking, if I even say that number... There is no shot. <laughs> There's no shot yeah, that they're I mean, gonna fucking it. take yeah. it. I mean, I get it, but at the same time, like, I'm not against this, mm. but like, at the same time, if you're a professional, and I mean, we're talking pretty damn good money here on on both. Well, spectrums, keep in mind so this is like, California, so the the inflate it's it's pretty inflated because of cost of living. So you, but the, like, don't like this isn't like like 247k in California would if you went you know, more East might be 120 K or 130 K. Like it literally balloons because of cost of living, but nevertheless, these are good, good salaries. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, it's partly the responsibility of the person that's getting the job to go and know sort of what these positions are paying in general. Like, if I were to go to school and say, take, um, I don't know, plumbing, like take a trade, I, mm. I took plumbing or I went and took, um, I don't know, software development, or I went and took, uh, fuck, uh, call. I went to culinary school, become a chef. It is up to the person that is picking this career to know roughly what these jobs pay um so you know transparency is never really a bad thing um it definitely it definitely makes things a little bit like do people really want to know what your salary is do people you know do some people care greatly that they don't want people to know what they make. Um, others don't give a shit. Um, but I think that that is, it should be up to the person. Um, not necessarily to the public. Uh, but with that being said, if you don't agree with that policy, then you, you know, you don't, you don't work there. Um, you, you know, you always, you always have a choice. So, you know, the whole, like, well, I think I'm worth $80,000 more and they're offering this, like what you said, and I'm scared to to say, well, like, dude, there's an $80,000 discrepancy here. Like, <laughs> if I if I tell them $80,000 more, they might laugh in my face and, like, be like, dude, they, there's not a fucking chance. If that's the case, then, like, you have no business, like, going there anyway. Like, you probably shouldn't work there. Like, if you really feel like you're worth that much, and like you have a very specific expertise, it's either two things. Either one, you you really are worth that much, and it's up to you to. It doesn't mean just because it's eighty thousand dollar less that you don't attempt to do that. There are several ways you could go about it. Number one, you could just blatantly say like, "Hey, I think I'm actually worth this much, and here is why." Right. So th this is this is why I'm I'm worth what I'm worth, and that might mean you have to bring in and show some of your work. You might have to say, well, hey, you know, this company over here and this company over here, they pay this much. Now I understand that I might be a little bit more or, hey, I'm even a little bit less, but I really want to work at this company. Um, you know, or if it's an $80,000 discrepancy and you really want to work at this company, but you want to make more money, but you're scared to flat out say it. Because you might, they they might just say, no, no, we're going to get somebody else. Trying to find the line between scaring off the job versus yeah. getting what you're worth kind of thing. But yeah. what you can do is you can say, listen, I was expecting to be paid this much. 
I think I'm worth this much. Here's why. Now, I'm not saying that you have to pay me this much, but I want to know what I have to do to get to this salary and what that looks like and if it's even possible here. If they say, no, we don't pay anybody that much, you're making more than the CEO or you're making more than the second in command or whatever, then you already have that answer. Then you can just go ahead and make the decision like if you want to be there or not. But at least from, from a boss's point of view, I think they're going to respect the fact that you're asking how you can achieve to get to there opposed to basically strong arming. It might look like you're strong arming them to say like, if I don't get paid this much, then, then I'm not, I'm not working here. So like, there's ways to go about of doing it. Um, I'm not totally against this idea. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Like it wouldn't matter much to me, but once again, I just think people should, if you're going to get into a career, you should roughly know how much you're making. Like, if I if, if if I go and apply at McDonald's, like I know what fast food restaurants are paying. They're paying minimum wage. And if they're really desperate, they might pay an extra dollar more, right? So like I'm not going to go there and expect them to pay me $35 an hour. It's just not going to happen. And they're not going to go on their bulletin board and say you're going to make between $17 an hour and $42 an hour. It just doesn't exist. So in jobs like this, I would need to know like, hey, what's the workload? How many, you know, what's what's expected of me? And then figure out if, if you think that it's worth it or not. You know, at the end of the day, man, like, people got to put in their own due diligence as well. Like, not everything is just fucking on a, on a dish that people can just go to. No, but to. I think this allows them to have due diligence to actually know, like, even if it was like, let's say it was like this, where it's Blizzard saying it's a $100,000 band, right? At least then, with that knowledge, they can go in and do what you just mentioned, where it's like, hey... You're offering me on this salary band that you posted, you're offering me a hundred instead of 134, let's say they offered 150. So we're 16 K mm -hmm. above, but you think you're worth 175 out of that salary band. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you're not worth the 247, but you think you're worth, you know, a little bit more. And then you can, then you, then absolutely. And it should be, even if this wasn't the case, you're right. This is what you would do anyway in an interview is you would want to ask, what is it? In, if it's possible within this company, what is it that I would need to like? What what targets do I need to hit to achieve yeah. this this salary uh, this this salary? And at least this gets you that far. Prior to this, the only way for you to know is you'd have to like either know people who are in the industry who are doing the same job as you with similar experience to be able to see like you know trying to find out what they're making between different companies. I mean, uh, there is Google. Google is a very amazing thing. And I yes. bet you I could go on Google right now and look up any job in any country or any state or province and have a median uh, rough, like, on what people make. So it's oh, like... Oh, sure, you get... You get, you get not a complete you get, guess, you know? It's, it's, no, like, it's, not, it's not a complete guess, but I would prefer... I would prefer if a company is going to come out and say, look, this is the range that this role can achieve in this company is when you first get here, this is what you can expect down here on this end. And yeah. if you've been here for a while, you expect up here. Yeah. And then when you negotiate your contract, you say, okay, well, you're placing me here. This is why I think to be higher or whatever else. And then it's, and then it's, it's easy. There should always be a, and there always will be a discussion between the employee and the employer as to how to best place them in, within the company. This just makes it so that there is less fog in between or less of an agency issue where the company knows, like, uh, they pay their QA guys $50,000 less than the guys across the street, and unless you know somebody, you'll never know that, and so the game is already stacked against you unless you can suss that information out through, like, Glassdoor or some shit on Google where you're going to go and, and hunt some, some salaries down in comparable companies. So, yeah, I think this is... I agree with you. Everyone should always have to do something and, or, or know that they are going to have to do some proving their point Bring, it's not just, you know, it's what can you do? Your resume is there. You had the interview. Now you have to impress them at the interview. Now you have to be able to say, this is really what I'm capable of. Show them some shit. This is why I think I'm worth X dollars uh, and come to an agreement and either come to an agreement or not. This just kind of helps it a little bit, especially in an industry where clearly there's some, clearly there's some serious, some serious ranges. If, if they're, if they're posting a $110,000 difference in one single role, that is a pretty... 
this is a pretty hefty friggin' range to work with, so I think this at least helps get a little bit closer to, uh, to making those interviews uh, a little less one-sided. Thank you